Good morning. Good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Like, subscribe, and share with your fellow denarian friends. To help support our channel we now accept tips using the blockchain-based Brave browser and BAT tokens. It makes a huge difference and is very much appreciated. To those of you that made a contribution, I sincerely thank you very much. If you have not done so yet, pick up your free trial copy of the Currency Exchange Planner and check out the awesome new Currency Exchange Planner Companion, voted the number one exchange planner in the Dinar community for a reason. Both the links to the powerful secure blockchain Brave browser as well as the Currency Exchange Planner are in the description box below this video. I have not done a video in a while as I had to take a step away and reevaluate the situation in Iraq and the world. In doing so I personally believe that Iraq has nothing left that they need to do. They are done, have been done and are simply awaiting on the rest of the world to get where they need to be for this global event to take place. I do believe I know where the global financial system and the United States system is headed, and that I will try to elaborate on a bit in this video and in future videos. There will be many of you that will have to learn many new things in the new system. Let me start by saying, you will slowly be weaned of paper cash and persuaded to use digital currency, which all of you use mostly now anyway. We are heading into a digital currency world and this includes Iraq. The central banks had no choice but to step up their technology to keep up with the cryptocurrency world. The fiat-based hold system is collapsing on itself and failing, and although this would have naturally happened anyways, the current crisis has moved it into warp speed. There is something called the Internet of Value, which is where we are headed. It is in a nutshell, the ability to move money worldwide as fast as you can send a text message. Long gone will be the days of a 3-5 to five day waiting period for money to process or loans to be approved. This will all happen in seconds. Don't get me wrong, this will not happen overnight, but I assure you it is where we are headed, that I am sure of. Welcome to the new internet of value, think of the days when you first used your dial-up modem to get online and send your first email. We are at a paradigm shift in technology right now and you are witnessing the rollout. It will be a bit scary for most of you in the beginning, but before long it will be the norm, and life will be much more convenient. You will each have something called a Fed account, an application on your phone which will hold all your information from social security, taxes and licensing to banking, everything is moving on to something called the blockchain. Again I will try to give a little information in each upcoming video from here forward. There are exciting times ahead, that I can assure all of you my friends. With it off my chest, let us get started. First article of interest for today. Legal clarifies the possibility of extending the period of government formation to more than 30 days or not. On Friday, legal expert Ali Al-Tamimi said that the period in charge of forming a government is stipulated in the Constitution and cannot be tampered with or changed, noting that, According to the principle of necessities permits records, the federal court can extend the period of government formation according to the current circumstance that Iraq is going through. Al-Tamimi said in a statement to information that the duration of the person assigned to form a government is 30 days specified in accordance with Article 76 of its five paragraphs, and he must form his cabinet and finish his ministerial curriculum during the mentioned period and otherwise it is considered a failure if this period has passed and he has not provided his breath. He added that, there is a legal, graduation, that allows the taxpayer to submit half of his ministerial cabinet plus one within 30 days granted to him to complete the rest of the cabinet at a later time, otherwise the period cannot be extended as it is a constitutional text that cannot be modified. And that, there is a possibility to hold a virtual session meaning that the president is in one place and the rest of the members are in another place in order to cast their votes online.
He stressed that, extending the period of forming the government is not possible according to the Constitution unless the federal court has a referendum and decided on that delay as a result of the force majeure that Iraq is going through, and therefore it is possible to extend through the federal court according to the principle of necessities permitting prohibitions. Next article of interest. Deputy. The current situation may force us to postpone the vote on the cabinet. On Friday, the MP from the Alliance of Riyadh Mohammad Ali said that the current health situation in which Iraq is living may necessitate that the parliament session not be held to vote on the ministerial cabinet if it was completed by the taxpayer, pointing out that holding the session is not impossible, but it requires taking some health measures. Ali said in a statement to Information that the Prime Minister designated in the event of announcing the completion of the names of his cabinet, the Parliament session regarding voting on the Ministerial Cabinet, especially in this current circumstance, will either be postponed for a specified period or a session within Parliament will be held to vote only. He added that the general context must be made under which the names of the CAB represented and all MPs are informed of them in order to resolve the matter before the Parliament session is held and allocate the session to pass the CAB or not. And that, the current situation is very difficult and the challenges are great, and some government ministries may be postponed, especially since there has never been the provision of a full ministerial cabinet at once noting that the parliament session can be held while providing all the appropriate health conditions for it. Next article of interest. The government may resort to borrowing and printing currency to provide salaries. The follow-up cell in the Prime Minister's office revealed today, Friday, that the government will be able to distribute the salaries of the current month of March, while it will resort to some solutions to ensure the provision of salaries next month. The head of the government follow-up cell, Mustafa Sanad, said in a radio statement followed by Muazin News, that Iraq's monthly income from oil is currently estimated at $1 billion only, after the price of a barrel drops to $18. Sanad said, the salaries of employees amount to $3.5 billion per month, which may push Iraq to borrow or to print the currency as a last option as the state of the state will be affected starting from next month. Next article of interest. World will need new financial system after COVID-19. The world as we know it is about to change radically as a result of COVID-19. How we live our lives, how we work, how we socialize and how money moves will change and profoundly. We'll leave others to figure out the first three but in terms of how money moves around the world. We will need to find a new way of financing the global economy when this virus has passed. And before you say it's too soon, please remember that the Bretton Woods Conference, which set out a post for economic system, was agreed a year before the end of hostilities and only a month after D-Day in 1944. It established a new global exchange rate system tied, in part, to the value of gold created the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank to bail out struggling countries and agreed that the US dollar would be the global reserve currency or the currency into which all other currencies should be exchangeable. The world needs to start thinking about a new Bretton Woods now and not muddle through, hoping to put it all back together with sticking plaster over the next few years. Capitalism suspended. Over the coming weeks, consumption will collapse, as will confidence. The hospitality sector as we knew it will be over. Most airlines will have ceased flying. House buying or selling will disappear and with it home furnishing and renovations. No one will start a major new project and very few will be completed. Broadly speaking, the economy will cease to function. Even if they are proactive now and lend immediately to robust businesses backed by last year's profits, Banks will experience widespread default from unpaid loans, mortgages and overdrafts. Capitalism will be suspended. The most optimistic view is that we put the economy to sleep, inoculating it as best we can with massive injections of cash or helicopter money. This could be done if governments and central banks acting together deposit free money and businesses in people's accounts not so much to maintain spending as to prevent contagious mass default. 
this monetary vaccine would best work alongside, and not instead of, governments taking on the wage bill for workers. Helicopter money could be delivered without incurring significant debt but, intellectually, it would mean tearing up the central banking rule book. Although this is the most sensible thing to do, governments may well choose to raise the money, unnecessarily in our opinion, by issuing massive amounts of sovereign debt. Having taken the measures outlined above, debts will be crippling, but interest rates will remain on the floor. Big central banks will create more money and use quantitative easing to fund this debt. Globalization, of which Ireland has overwhelmingly been a beneficiary, is predicated on travel, trade and the free movement of capital. This will go into reverse. The speed of any reversal will depend on the type of governments that emerge from the crisis. There is a higher likelihood of more nationalist protectionist and less cosmopolitan politicians emerging in countries traumatized by the virus. If we want to preserve the liberal order, which has delivered relative prosperity for the past 40 years, we need to convene the G20 immediately with a view to a new Bretton Woods arrangement. This disparate group includes major nations from all continents and the three biggest economic players, the United States, China and the European Union. The UN is too cumbersome. Before its first emergency meeting, via Zoom or Skype, the G20 would have asked its brightest thinkers and economists to come up with some creative ideas to kickstart the post-COVID-19 world. Alas, these recommendations will inevitably be watered down once the politicians get their hands on them. The US, for example, would probably demand that the dollar remain the global reserve currency but China simply wouldn't wear that and the Chinese might even be backed by EU governments. Assuming the gravity of the situation forces politicians to come to a compromise, we could be looking at a brand new global reserve currency, which might be based on a basket of currencies including the yuan, euro and dollar. This new virtual unit of credit, egg the globo or the mundo, could then put a worldwide value on all debts and assets. That could then restart supply and demand and might even lead to cash and coins being issued in the new clearing currency by a reconstituted IMF one which the old Western countries would no longer control. Debt. Apart from what kind of money we'd all be using, the most pressing issue would be debt. In the worst case. Bankrupt Western governments might have to print trillions of euro and dollars to give their citizens enough money to survive. It's not unreasonable to assume that they would consider nationalizing vast swathes, if not all, of the economy, especially those in travel, hospitality and essential services such as rubbish collection and banking, again. This is already underway in some countries. That means sovereigns, for a while, would own hundreds of thousands of distressed companies, all their debt, all their assets and all of their wage bills which could then be leased or sold back in chunks to those who could afford it. Ireland and Germany have recent experience in how to do this. Unpalatable as it may sound, those who ran the National Asset Management Agency and the True Hand, which disposed of East German assets after the fall of the Berlin Wall would become the most sought-after consultants in the world. In fact, nama Asation could go into the global lexicon as the byword for returning distressed assets back to the private sector. But even if none of these ideas is implemented or even debated, something urgent and drastic will have to be done. Just as the calendar was bifurcated into BC and AD, the economic future will be delineated into two eras, anti-corona, ac, and post-corona. PC. Next article of interest. The Internet of Value. What it means and how it benefits everyone. Venture capitalist William Mugai R. calls blockchain the second significant overlay on the Internet, just as the web was the first layer back in 1990. When most people think of blockchain, Bitcoin instantly comes to mind. But the potential that excites Mugai and many others goes far beyond financial transactions made using such digital currencies. It touches on what we at Ripple have for many years called the Internet of Value. What is the Internet of Value? Our vision is for value to be exchanged as quickly as information. Although information moves around the world instantly, 
A single payment from one country to another is slow, expensive and unreliable. In the U.S., a typical international payment takes three to five days to settle, has an error rate of at least 5% and an average cost of $42. Worldwide, there are $180 trillion worth of cross-border payments made every year, with a combined cost of more than $1.7 trillion a year. With the Internet of Value, a value transaction such as a foreign currency payment, can happen instantly, just as how people have been sharing words, images and videos online for decades. And it's not just money. The Internet of Value will enable the exchange of any asset that is of value to someone, including stocks, votes, frequent flyer points, securities, intellectual property, music, scientific discoveries, and more. Blockchain enables value exchange. Until now, selling, buying or exchanging these assets has required an intermediary like a bank, marketplace, physical or digital, credit card company, or third-party booking service like Airbnb. Blockchain technology, including Ripple solution, allows assets to be transferred from one party directly to another, with no middleman. The transfer is validated, permanent and completed instantly. At last value will be able to move around the world as information does. Investment management service, Rathbone summarizes this potential as dot promising to do for value what the internet has done for information, decentralize control, remove asymmetries, and change the way we transact and interact with everything. From money transfers and asset trading, through healthcare provision and music downloading to collaborating and sharing of resources, blockchain promises to enable, empower and revolutionize. And disrupt. We are already seeing significant applications of blockchain in the real world. NASDAQ is using it to help firms manage shares. The Baltic nation of Estonia is securely storing the healthcare records for more than 1 million of its citizens on distributed databases. Japanese airline Peach Aviation recently became the third commercial carrier to accept cryptocurrency as payment for flights, while the musician Imogen Heap built her own blockchain to release a single directly to her fan base. Connecting blockchains is the key. At the moment, there exists a multitude of competing blockchains which do not necessarily connect with one another, so assets cannot be exchanged like information just yet. For the Internet of Value to become a reality, industry standards must be adopted in order to homogenize the world's different financial systems. This is why Ripple, along with a growing community of financial institutions and payments providers, support Interledger Protocol, ILP, which standardizes how to instantly settle transactions across different ledgers and networks. ILP can be thought of much like the protocol HTTP used in web address that became the global standard for online information exchange. Critically, ILP can allow all assets of value, including cryptocurrencies like XRP, existing currencies like the euro or US dollar, and other securities, stocks, bonds, and commodities, to be exchanged by people. Ripple is vision for the second era of the Internet. At Ripple, we believe the most significant benefit of the Internet of Value will be for payments. We provide one, frictionless experience to send money globally using the power of blockchain. Making cross-border payments faster, cheaper, and reliable will bring major benefits to consumers, businesses, banks and governments, while also introducing a standard protocol for how every institution and individual connects across various networks to exchange data. Doing this will connect billions of people around the world to transact, give rise to entirely new businesses and industries, increase financial inclusion for millions of underbanked consumers. We believe this process of standardization will have a transformative impact on our world comparable to the way the shipping container standardized commerce in the 1950s and drove globalization or how the standardization of web protocols in the 1980s gave us the digital information economy we know today. Let the second era of the internet begin. If you liked today's video hit the like and subscribe buttons to be notified as new ones are posted. Check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter for all of today's articles of interest.
Pick up your free trial copy of the newly upgraded Currency Exchange Planner and check out the new Currency Exchange Planner Companion before you leave. Use the promo code, the Denarian, and get 25% off at checkout when you decide to unleash the full planner's abilities, along with the mobile application added free for being my subscriber. Register today as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program. If you do not keep your savings in a real asset like gold, you risk everything as the fiat system fails and they boot up the new quantum financial system on the blockchain. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold, as tomorrow may be too late. The program is made so everyone can afford to save in gold, by offering it one gram at a time. Start saving in a real true asset like gold, it's free to register and secure your family's savings tomorrow. Why do you think all the central banks are loading up on gold lately, and running from the current depreciating fiat US dollar? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected. Both of the links to these invaluable programs are available in the description box below this video. Go check them out. Knowledge is power. Using that newfound knowledge is powerful. Over and out, for now, the Denarian.